Hello everyone and welcome to my top 10 series. I thought it was about time I added more uh, variety of things on this channel and so I opted just to go for a top 10 series um, as part of my new stuff to appear on this channel. I'm not going to ramble on, you all know how a top 10 works. So without further ado, here is my first top 10 list, my top 10 Sonic the Hedgehog games. Number 10 goes to Sonic Lost World for the Nintendo Wii U. Sonic Lost World was a weird one for me. I was intrigued about this game when gameplay demos of it were shown on various sites. It was bright, it was colourful, it was reminiscent of past 2D Sonic titles and only had Sonic as the main playable character. Not Big the Cat, not Knack the Weasel, not Chester the Whale, no, the only main character was Sonic. When I finally got the game one Christmas, the gameplay looked and felt different to past 3D Sonic titles offering more the way of platforming as opposed to just simply going fast. It also felt a lot like another platforming game, but I can't for the life of me remember which one. All in all, it felt like a solid Sonic title, and one that brought back the platforming element of the Sonic series which previous 3D installments forgot about. A lot of what made the past 2D Sonic titles so great was the intricate platforming mixed with the high speed action we all know and love, and Sonic Lost World did a good job in combining these two mechanics. However, the difficulty could be very frustrating at times, and at multiple points I got stuck and lost all my lives. It tended to be on certain 2D sections of the game, where precise controls were needed, and it seemed to be an area where the game lacked. Lost World didn't have bad controls, far from it, but they weren't perfect. Sonic Lost World though still remains a great Sonic Sonic title and one you should pick up if you see it for a cheap price and that's where it earns my number 10 spot. Number 9 Sonic Chaos for the Sega Master System and the Game Gear Number 9 is the one which will probably cut my subscriber count in half because apparently not many people like this game or any other the Master System Game Gear games actually and yes, while I can see that the Master System titles are not on the same level as their Mega Drive counterparts, the Genesis counterparts, they aren't as awful as most people make them out to be. At least, not in my opinion. I never had a Game Gear or Master System growing up, but when I stumbled across my friend's Game Gear one evening, when I was probably around 8 years old, I was astounded by what was inside. A portable Sonic game? In colour? I wasn't even aware such a piece of magic existed! I was used to the Game Boy in its lovely colour palette, but no seriously the Game Boy was revolutionary. Apart from the 16-bit graphics though, Sonic Chaos had nearly all of the positive features of its 16-bit cousins. Familiar speedy gameplay with great platforming integrated, the ability to play as Sonic and his Tails, Tails could even fly, fantastic music and a genuinely good Sonic title to play on the go. Maybe I am a bit nostalgia blinded, and yes it isn't as good as the Mega Drive titles, but I still come back to this portable Sonic title every so often to get my 8-bit Sonic fix. Number 8 Sonic Advance for the Game Boy Advance Number 8 goes to another portable Sonic title, Sonic Advance for the Game Boy Advance. Most people usually opt for the second game of the Advance trilogy as their favourite out of the three, but for me it has to be the first one. Sort of a similar story to Sonic Chaos really, I wasn't used to playing Sonic games on the go. It was my friend who owned a Game Gear along with Sonic Chaos, not me. However I did own a Game Boy Advance, but so did my brother, and he managed to end up snagging the game before I did. Needless to say though, whenever he put down the game, I would immediately shove the game in my GBA to play it. Sonic Advance was superb, miles better than any portable Sonic title before it. Having a selection of four great traditional Sonic characters before the days of Chip the... well, whatever he was. It was amazing. I prefer the first game in the Advance trilogy because of its feel and the levels which were in the game really. Sonic Advance had a feel of the older traditional 2D Sonic titles of the Mega Drive. A feeling which players were forgetting due to the 3D adventure games which were really popular at the time. To experience this Sonic sensation again, on the go, in fantastic 16-bit graphics, was unforgettable. Combine this with each character having their own custom moveset such as Knuckles being able to punch and Amy being able to wield her hammer of death and the awesome diverse levels with their equally awesome soundtrack, then you have, in my opinion, the best portable Sonic game around. Number 7 Sonic CD for the Mega CD 
or the Sega CD, depending on where you come from. Growing up, I knew zero about the Mega CD's existence, or the 32X for that matter. In fact, I only heard of this Sonic game roughly back in 2006, and played it for the very first time in 2010 when it was released on the PlayStation Network store. Finally getting a chance to play it though was a godsend. A proper old school Mega Drive era 2D Sonic game which I'd never played or seen before was an amazing experience for me. And for about an hour or so, I was 7 years old again. The game itself is kind of like Sonic 1 on crack, and speed at the same time actually. <laughs> Most levels seem to take inspiration from the zones found in Sonic 1. However, the level design is much different, with springs and rings found in the weirdest of places, and having to keep your speed up to travel back and forward in time, it's safe to say you will not be standing still in this game. Sonic CD is a fantastic title, with many people considering it to be the very best Sonic game due to its frantic level design and musical score. While I don't quite agree with it being the best Sonic game in the series, it is still a very solid Sonic title and holds up very well due to its differences from the other past 2D Sonic titles, such as being able to travel back through time in each of the zones, the CD quality music, the race and introduction of fan favourite Metal Sonic, and um, <coughs> Amy Rose, I suppose, as well as the various boss fights packed throughout the game. If you still haven't played this gem of a Sonic title, I really suggest you do so. It is a great game and is reminiscent of the Mega Drive Sonic games, but yet has its own distinct charm, as well as its own creepy hidden message and music. Seriously, what was that all about, Sega? If I would have seen that shit as a kid, I would have burnt all my Sonic possessions. Number 6 goes to Sonic the Hedgehog for the Sega Mega Drive slash Genesis. Number 6 goes to the game which started it all. It started the great video game rivalry of the early 90s and gave Mario and Nintendo a run for their money. The original Sonic game is a timeless classic. When Green Hill Zone pops up and the music begins to play, you can't help but feel taken in by the whole atmosphere of the game. I would be lying if I said I could remember how I was introduced to this game. But according to my mum, a neighbour of ours owned a Mega Drive, whilst we only had a, uh, an NES at the time, she said I couldn't stop harping on about this game called Sonic the Hedgehog. Apparently I always wanted to go over their house to play it. Needless to say, the game left its mark on me. This new character was so much cooler than Mario, and not to mention faster. Going through loops at speeds I wasn't used to, combined with azure blue skies and dazzling 16-bit graphics, was an incredible experience which still doesn't get boring in my opinion. Not to mention the other zones full of other traps and springs flinging Sonic left, right and centre. It was a game to remember, and a game I needed in my life. Eventually my brother and I were lucky enough to own a Mega Drive, and one of the first games we had with it was Sonic the Hedgehog. I couldn't stop playing it. Even today the graphics and sound are just, they're just timeless. Sure, some of the zones aren't the most memorable or best zones featured throughout Sonic's exclusive career, but they still hold up very well, and are still a blast to play to this very day. And, the game introduced me to my all-time favourite fictional character, which provided me with years of entertainment and enjoyment through good times and bad, Sonic the Hedgehog. Thank you, Sega. Number 5, Sonic 3 and Knuckles for the Sega Mega Drive slash Genesis. The last of the all-time golden greats of the Mega Drive era Sonic games comes Sonic 3 and Knuckles. Well, they were actually released as two separate games because of their size, but they are always meant to be one long continuous adventure. Hence why Sega made the Sonic and Knuckles cartridge in such a way that it could lock onto the Sonic 3 cartridge so players could play it how it was meant to be experienced. Growing up, I never owned either one of these carts. I knew a few friends who had Sonic and Knuckles, but I never knew anyone with Sonic 3, which is incredibly odd now I come to think of it. In fact, I only heard of Sonic 3 later on as a teenager messing around with emulators. How tragic was that? But this was a time without internet, and when I wasn't subscribed to any gaming mags, so I had no idea about the newest Sonic titles at the time. Plus, I was still getting my Sonic fix from Sonic 1 and 2. Of course, many years have passed since then, and I've played and beaten both of these titles, 
I probably prefer the Sonic 3 campaign, if you want to call it that, but both of these carts offer longer zones for Sonic, Tails, a new all-round badass Knuckles to play through. Playing through the zones with Knuckles felt fresh and new, in addition to Knuckles himself being such a fan favourite due to his design and character, an element which the Sonic team of today just can't seem to emulate anymore. Once again the music is kick ass and has a different sound to it this time around due to several new composers being employed at Sega, one of them being Michael Jackson, yes the Michael Jackson, as well as the zones being longer in length and different designs which weren't seen in a Sonic game up to this point such as a snow zone a desert themed one, as well as many others which integrated platforming and speed almost flawlessly. Many fans name this as the best Sonic game available. With all the great zones to play through, and going back to a simpler time which just consisted of Sonic, Tails, Knuckles and Robotnik, I can see why fans cherish this gem of the game. Number 4 goes to Sonic Adventure 2 for the Sega Dreamcast. Hang on, aren't all 3D Sonic games entirely and utterly rubbish I hear some of you say? Well no! The first two 3D Sonic games, originally for the Sega Dreamcast, they're not rubbish at all, they're actually very good. Well, at least in my opinion they are. Sonic Adventure 2 allows you to play as the baddies for the first time ever in a Sonic title. It was a really great feature at the time and the one which really enticed me to purchase the game. The game was split into three different types. High speed action stages which Sonic and newcomer Shadow took part in, sort of mech shooting stages which belonged to Tails and Eggman and treasure hunting stages which Knuckles and another newcomer Rouge the Bat took command of. The game offered a great range of different gameplay styles, although like many other games and critics of this game, my favourite gameplay style were the high speed action stages, which was only natural considering this was a Sonic game and that's one of the big reasons we play Sonic games in the first place. There was quite a lot to do in this game apart from the main story, from chair rearing, which returned for the first adventure title, to the multiplayer options available, particularly in the GameCube port which came out a couple of years later. There was even kart racing! Ok, so it wasn't in the same league as Mario Kart, nowhere near, but it was still an option to waste time with. Sonic Adventure 2 may not have aged brilliantly compared to some other retro titles, but it's still one of my very favourite Sonic titles. If only for the fact it contains the single greatest piece of video game music, Live and Learn by the awesome Crush 40. Talking about the music, that was also very diverse and was awesomely composed once again adding to the credibility of this game. When all these things combined together, this makes it my 4th favourite Sonic title ever released. Hoo hoo, into the top 3 now. The number 3 spot goes to Sonic Generations for the PS3, Xbox 360 and PC. I recently played all the way through this game as part of my Game Time series so check that out if you fancy seeing more of it. But Sonic Generations is essentially a love letter to all Sonic fans. When this game was announced I just knew it would be fantastic. Getting a chance to play through the Hog's greatest zones in both a 3D and 2D aspect sounded excellent. Add to the fact that Sega added another Sonic, classic Sonic to be precise, complete with this pale blue look and stout size then this simply was just a must have Sonic title, a feeling which I hadn't felt in a while at this point. The designers put a lot of care and attention into this game and were most probably fans themselves. Both 2D and 3D stages captured the essence of their original designs whilst adding something new and unfamiliar, like riding the skateboard in the classic Sonic City Escape stage or adding new Wisps to the Planet Wisp stage originally from Sonic Colours. Modern and classic Sonic play differently and have different skills which are unique to them such as classic Sonic's elemental shields which make an appearance from Sonic 3 and Knuckles or modern Sonic's Lightspeed Dash from the Adventure series. If you're a fan of the past Sonic titles, there is a lot in here that will make you nostalgic and make you say, oh yeah, I remember that from Sonic 2, or I remember that from Sonic 06. Actually, scrap that last one. But seriously though, if you do want a genuinely great Sonic game, then pick this up. And if you're a long term Sonic fan and have been around since the Mega Drive games, then it would literally be a sin not to purchase it. If you happen to own this game on PC there are even mods which include many other past Sonic levels which didn't officially make it into the game. Some of them look incredible. 
Oh yeah, and the music itself is a good enough reason to pick up the game. Seriously. Some of the songs and remixes featured in this game are outstanding. Far too many to mention here. And the way the game ends, oh, guys and girls, you just need this game in your life if you're a Sonic fan. Enough said, moving on. Number 2 goes to Sonic the Hedgehog 2 for the Sega Mega Drive slash Sega Genesis. Sonic the Hedgehog 2 means so much to me. It was one of the first games I ever owned. I usually had to share a lot of my games with my brother when I was younger, so I was very excited to have this game all to myself. It also cemented the fact that the first Sonic game wasn't a fluke and made the Blue Hedgehog my very favourite video game icon. It's also the game I probably played the most. I must have played this game going into four digits by now. Seriously, I play it all the time when I've got a spare minute or two. Whether it's the original Mega Drive version or the countless digital versions available on multiple systems throughout the years, I usually can't help myself and purchase it again and again and again. The game itself wasn't anything revolutionary, it didn't do anything that different to the first Sonic game. What it did do was improve upon the first game in practically every aspect. The game now featured a new character for Sonic to team up with, Tails the Fox, which meant a new multiplayer mode. This game also introduced, arguably, Sonic's greatest move, the Spin Dash, propelling Sonic from 0 to 745 miles per hour, I think, in a matter of seconds. This kept the rhythm and the speed of the game constantly going. There were now more zones, and each one had the perfect mixture of speed and platforming, more than any other Sonic title in my opinion. The music was now even better and features some of the very best Mega Drive tunes you'll hear. The game also introduced a 7th Chaos Emerald, and once Sonic collected them all, he became a complete golden badass by the name of Super Sonic. All of these things and more makes this my second best Sonic title ever. And my number one very favourite Sonic game goes to Sonic Adventure for the Sega Dreamcast. These days all you seem to hear is how bad the two Sonic Adventure games are, particularly this one. And while I do admit this game has aged, just like Mario 64 has aged, <laughs> the game, at least in my opinion, is still a top Sonic title and my personal favourite. This game was responsible for bringing the Speedy Hog into 3D for goodness sake. It included various characters, both new and old, and the levels were exciting and fun. Look, I can sort of understand why some people don't class this as a great Sonic title. Yes, including the Big the Cat into the gameplay was very... questionable. Yes, the E102 levels were quite short, but the rest of the characters and their levels were pretty solid, especially for 1998. Who can forget the first time you saw Sonic running at the speed of sound away from that whale in Emerald Coast? The first time playing as Knuckles, being able to use his gliding ability in a full 3D environment. Because, let's face it, controlling Knuckles' gliding ability in the past 2D titles was pretty stiff. And finally getting the chance to play as Super Sonic in that epic last section of the game with Open Your Heart blasting out, it was awesome stuff. Yes, I will admit, I might be a bit nostalgia blinded by this game, because this game literally blew my mind as a kid. Last time I saw Sonic before this game, it was running along a 2D plane. Next thing I know, I see this game being demoed in a local Toys R Us, with Sonic running faster than ever across a fully rendered 3D city. It was too much for 10 year old me. I needed it. And after playing it, it still lived up to the hype in my opinion. Yes, Sonic Adventure may not be the perfect game, and yes, if I was trying to convince someone to become a Sonic fan by showing them the highlights of Sonic's career, I'd probably show them Sonic 2. But for me, this game signified that Sonic could survive in a 3D environment. It can be done. It's also a game which is one of the sole reasons I keep my Dreamcast in my room, as I find myself regularly coming back to it. It's a fun game with a totally fantastic and diverse soundtrack. Seriously, I think I nearly have every single one of the tracks in this game on my iPod. And overall, it has a great story. The best in any Sonic game in my opinion. So yeah, Sonic Adventure! Not the most perfect or stable of Sonic games, but it's not the atrocity most people make it out to be. If you're a Sonic fan and you haven't played it yet, just play it. It really is a great 3D Sonic title, and one when you look past the negatives such as the glitches and Big the Cat, you're sure to enjoy. And yeah, it is my very favourite, number one Sonic the Hedgehog game. Thank you very much for watching my very first top 10 video guys. 
please let me know what you think of the video and please let me know your top 10 Sonic games by writing in the comments below. I really would love to know. Um, and let me know how, uh, how you thought this video went. As I said, it's my first top 10 video, so uh, it's bound not to be perfect, far from it. But thank you guys, thank you very much for watching my stuff. Um, and yeah, I look forward to seeing your top 10 um, Sonic games in the comments. Thank you once again, people, and I'll see you soon.